This conference will now be recorded. Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to a uh, special virtual meeting of the Planning and Zoning Liaison Committee. Today is March 14th, and it is uh, approximately 8.02 in the morning. Uh, first thing on the agenda is uh, discussion and possible action on the minutes of the January 5th special meeting agenda. I'd like to entertain a motion to approve those minutes. I'd like to make a motion to approve as submitted. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And then the uh, only other thing on this discussion is uh, a um, discussion regarding the planning and zoning text change amendment, which um, I feel like we've been discussing for many months now, but uh, hopefully this is uh, coming to fruition and um, we'll be moving on to bigger and better things after this. So, um, are we, uh, are, is everyone planning to attend that meeting? That's next week, right? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Is it, is it next week or is it, it's what tonight. is your day today? It's tonight. It's, it's tonight. tonight. Yeah. Oh, today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I thought I, you were. I was waiting for tonight. I thought you were. It's hurting. tonight. I'll be there tonight. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, Joe, you can go next week too if you want. <laughs> And just for clarification, tomorrow night's the other meeting, right? The off meeting? Yes. Okay, thank you. I am unable to attend that meeting. I have a, another function to attend. So, um, okay. Um, everyone got a copy of that, that very special map. Um, and uh, I thought that was a uh, you know very interesting way of a, a very good visual of uh, what we're trying to accomplish um, with those with that text amendment. And so um, I think the uh, what will be difficult is trying to keep this meeting on track with uh, the fact that this is not about data centers. This is about um, you know, the text amendments that we've been working on for the past 10 years, right, Jim? 20 years. 20 years, okay. Plus, uh, plus. It would be helpful if I just reviewed uh, what the objectives of the EDC have been for as long as I've been here, and then Jim and Joe have been around longer than I, they can step in if they like. That would be great. All right, so, uh, this is Jim just, just mentioned this has been a, a work in progress for a long time, but the EDC's objectives since certainly since I've been on board, and I think it, it's uh, again, anybody that's been here longer, correct me, but we wanted to create more opportunity in the IX zone in terms of uh, land use, recognizing that there's not a lot of land left there, but yet. You know, back when um, the IX or the Barnes Industrial Park North and South were uh, all the Barnes apple orchards and the, the community converted them to industrial property, you can imagine that that's a big lift to ask anybody to take bucolic land and turn it into industrial park. They wanted to control that and they put a 50% open space requirement in that zone. And fa fast forward some 40 years now, um, certainly 50% open space requirements in industrial zones. Um, are just overreaching. Most are, you know, 40%, 35%, depending on density and, and the size of a city, sometimes less. But so the Economic Development Commission has been um, encouraging planning and zoning to take and reduce the open space requirement, and that translates into less open space. Uh, also, we want to make sure we can increase the building footprint. So under the guise of, you know, it's land they're not making anymore, let's get more potential development and yield out of the industrial park land that we have. So you'll see as when we go through this that the, what's being proposed now is to reduce the open space requirement to 35%, which was 
um, something that uh, we had endorsed. Um, so, and then the last thing, so that was, you know, reduce open space requirement, increase the building coverage ratio so we can get more on land that's there. And then uh, in the I-5 zone, it was all about increasing or uh, adding additional uses in the I-5 zone. Recognizing that a good portion of the I-5 zone is in the watershed, it's a very delicate balance as to what's, what's allowed and what's not, but presently you can pretty much develop either office or hotel in the I-5 zone, neither of which for the last several years have been very marketable in terms of development. So I think we have said at some of our meetings, if those are the only two uses allowed in the I-5, you might as well hang a closed sign on the on the, on the, the I-5 district right now. So what is being proposed that we, um, what has emerged and I think for good reason is the I-5 zone in essence would go away a WI zone, which is a watersh watershed interchange zone, will emerge and cover a broader swath of uh, what the I-5 zone covered, because the WI covers the entire watershed, and part of the IX zone is in the watershed. So now this, for example, the Bristol Myers Squibb property is presently today in the IX zone, which allows a fair amount of uses. It will now be in the WI zone, because of its because of its location in the watershed, and to some degree the limit, the uses will be much more constrained. However, if you have land in the I-5 zone, you're going to get additional use categories like light manufacturing, limited warehousing, um, indoor, you know, sports. You can do a, a nice hockey ring. You can do indoor soccer, so things of that nature. So, um, and then the, the the real the at the heart of the WI the WI zone is to protect the watershed and in protecting the watershed it's all about um, you know less impervious surface they don't mind big buildings because big buildings have big roofs and they can control groundwater coming off of a roof you cannot control groundwater as well coming off of a parking lot so they don't mind big, big buildings and small parking lots vis-a-vis -a, -vis. a data center would be a perfect fit because square footage wise you know, a mega data center covers a lot of square footage, but there's a low employee count, which means you don't need as big a parking lot. So um, it's all about that groundwater and trying to control the groundwater, in addition to controlling what goes on inside of a building in the watershed to make sure there's not something that's environmentally friendly, a potential spill could happen, get into the, you know, our drinking water, et cetera. So uh, from my perspective, it looks as if the EDC is getting for the most part, what we asked for. And there certainly are some compromises along the way. So we are getting um, uh, less um, uh, open space. So the requirements going down, we're getting higher building coverages in the IX zone. We're getting expanded uses in what was the I-5 with the caveat that there are some IX properties that now will have more restrictions on them than, than were there before to protect our watershed. So that's kind of the backdrop and, and uh, the intro to the materials that um, we've got in front of us. Um, and I'll leave it at that. Tim uh, and uh, Hank, if I can chime in here, the uh, those two topics, I don't believe will even come up tonight. Um, we've sat in these meetings and um, I, I really, the last meeting, I was the only one to bring up the uh, uh, additional building coverage. And I just think that what is written is just going to stay there. And I really don't see anybody bringing it up tonight. I think the uh, discussion is going to be on the data centers. Well, I think that um, both Kevin um, and Allison, town engineer, town planner, um, and the, um, you know, the, the planning and zoning commission are going to work diligently not to let it go that way. Because this, every, everybody's got the latest draft because it went out with the, it went out with the minutes. Draft, yeah. I mean, all the data center language, right? So the data center language is not even in this document anymore. Pulled out because of a fact, of course, it was a separate data center regulation. So, if data centers come up in conversation, 
think it's going to be very easy for them to say there's no there's no language about data centers in this in this proposal. So I understand, Jim. There's always that risk, but I think it's probably um, it's it's been offset by the fact that all the data center language is is out of these drafts because it'll be handled separately. Uh, and and I know that the um, you know uh, management that's presenting is going to make try to make it very clear that this is not about data centers. This is about uh, changing the uses in the zones and allowing data centers as a use is an entirely separate conversation that we know is going to be taking place on the 14th. I, I think they were pretty smart to do that. Um, otherwise, you know, this could quickly get derailed. Um, I think probably the biggest uh, bone of contention with the public and everything is going to be uh, the watershed and trying to convince people that we have the um, the same interest as they do of protecting the watershed. Uh, we all live in town here. Um, so uh, I think that's going to be the biggest thing. Well, I think in all honesty, by creating a separate zone foot should give a good indication of how important it is and how we all agree on keeping keeping it separate, keeping the focus on the uh, the importance of it. I mean, I know there's always going to be people that's going to talk. But, uh, I would say that's our biggest argument, uh, biggest defense. I mean, in all honesty, uh, I, I think this whole thing was constructed really, really well. Uh, as Tim said, I, you know, we had to make compromise, and that's what dem uh, democracy is all about. But as far as it comes for the watershed, I really think we, you know, the town. Uh, came out a big winner on that. I really, really do. I agree. I agree. Just trying to convince others there about that. So, right. I, I'd like to um, just take a moment and and um, kind of hash out how uh, how we should position ourselves in the event that we feel like we need to get up there and uh, say a few words and stuff. So. Uh, rather than lean over and and discuss it during the meeting, I'd like to have at least some idea of you know who's going to talk about what uh, topics to uh, keep everybody back focused. Well, if I may, Hank, I think there's there's a couple of messages. Um, you've heard me say before that you know this document, um, albeit um, it, it's it's taken you know a while to put together, and I don't think we should say that necessarily, but um, but it is a collaborative effort between leadership of the town. So the, the town engineer who understands groundwater regulations as well as anybody, that's what they do. The town planner, um, the, the public utilities, all right? The head of water, the head of the water department is in water sewers saying off on this. So this, this has been, it's, you know, in the, in the mayor's office. So this has touched, um, you know, this has touched all of the, the appropriate departments and what these departments are saying at this point, as well as EDC, is saying that we have we have come together and agree that this is what should go forth. Now, I'm going to say with one exception, because I want to talk to you about um, uh, something, you know, if I can re reference this, this grid, everybody's got it in their packet. Maybe if you could open it up and, and pull it, I want to share one number that uh, um, we should talk about. But, um, other than that, I think you know that's that's probably not a bad way to get started, Hank, is by saying that you know we've all worked together, um, and maybe it comes from you, Hank, as the chair of the Planning and Zoning Liaison Commission. I'm not sure. Yeah. But yeah. It's what happens when you know good good outcomes are what happens when collaboration takes place. You know, and I, I believe that we need to let the experts. Uh, you know, the experts are there, they're, you know, their skills are far better than what we can provide uh, as far as, um, you know, how this is, how will all work and, you know, and stuff. So um, I think it's a pretty impressive list there when you say the engineering, the planning, uh, public utilities, all that. Um, so again, uh, the law know, department, Hank, add the law department on that because there's, there's yeah. a lot of people's conversations as well. Yeah. Sure will. So, 
Now, Hank, just before we, um, there, there is one thing if, if everybody can reference this, uh, this grid. So in that grid, in the WI zone, it shows maximum building coverage at 15%. So the maximum building coverage in the IX zone, given the reduction in the open space, the building coverage ratio is going to go up to 40%. And the open space requirement is being recommended to go to 35. Now, at our last EDC meeting, that 35 was actually 40 open space. And we talked about, Jim, do you openly talk about going to 30 or 35. So we had, after our last planning and zoning liaison committee meeting, we had talked about me going to um, the team and saying, geez, we think 40% is still too high. We'd like to see it either at 30 or 35. So they had agreed, and in this last draft, had moved it down to 35. I just didn't realize it at the time of our EDC meeting. Oh. Yeah. So I think in the IX, it's working great. All right, minimum open space down to 35 from 50, building coverage ratio up to 40% from 25. Those are very right. positive, right? Now let's go to the WI zone, which is this new zone, and they've got building coverage at 15%. So I met with Allison and um, Kevin late last week to go through this after I you know, reread the document and, and to go through that and said, you know, I'm concerned that that building coverage ratio is so low. Why, why 15%? Where the number come from? If you're saying to me that, and they have very consistently that roofs are okay because we can control the rainwater coming off the roof, then why are we limiting the roof to only 15% of the buildable space? Why is that more? And they both, we, you know, after a, a short conversation, they said, you know. We extrapolated that number um, and we have no issue whatsoever raising it. So I think that's very important because now what they're talking about is uh, they would support making the maximum building coverage ratio in the WI zone 30%. 30. Wow. Good job, Jim. <laughs> All right. So it was too late to change the document that went out to the commission. So this is something that we have to introduce tonight. Okay. All right. So uh, and I'd be happy to introduce that if you'd like, but uh, or or you can or whatever. But um, and both Allison and Kevin are in full support. It was just too late to change the docs and send them out again. So because their their commission had already received. So oh, Tim, do you want to take that on? I think uh, you know the story behind that is uh, good to hear. You know. Yeah, I, I, I'm certainly fine with that. So, Hank, I would, I would, I would you know, maybe suggest that um, I should bring that up maybe before you talk about the collaborative effort part and so forth. Um, I mean, that's open to you, you know, your decision or the committee. But um, so that would be one change we're going in with. It just happened to be a. The last last kind of a last minute change and it will generate some conversation but you know kevin and allison are building on board i mean it's just it doesn't make sense the way it's written you know. right. it's, as, as a suggestion i don't know um if you represent it when you represent this i would almost think to work it in as a thank you to all the departments, from the law department to the water and everybody, um, and and run that way. Um, I, I just think that that would carry a lot of water. Yeah, I agree. Good idea. You know, Hank, on, on this particular sheet that everybody got uh, Friday, yeah. I mean, I, again, I think that's a great illustration. They're going to share it tonight. I think, you know, we don't necessarily have to comment on it. I just think it's a, it's a great illustration as to what the outcome of this change is in the IX. But, you know, going from a 76,000 square foot building uh, to 120,000 square foot under the proposed regulations, 
is, is a very visual way of saying, wow, this, this is what the EDC was talking about. Now that's, that's a 58% increase in building size. That translates into potentially more jobs on the same size site, certainly more tax revenue on the same size site, all right? And that's our, that's, that's our role, so. Well, I think you also um, you need to take a look at, um, from an environmental standpoint, uh, look at the amount of natural open space on the second diagram versus the first. So, you know, there's less chemicals and, and less mowing and all that other stuff. So, um, you know. Exactly. Yep. So, yes, you know, to your point, Hank, it's, it's a more environmentally friendly outcome. Um, on the same size site that benefits the town a lot more. There's a lot more um, natural open space too, which I've been an advocate of because it's, it's just rather than mowing and using fertilizer on the grass and so forth, I think the natural space is, is a lot, you know, a lot cleaner, a lot neater um, to the environment. I agree. The other thing they took out in the language was uh, helipads. And I certainly didn't have any issue with that. I don't know if anybody else did or not, but they took out data centers, they took out helipad uses. The, after that meeting, Tim, with um, Jim and I uh, with the helipads, I did a little research on it. And there is one helipad left in, in those zones. And um, it's, it's, uh, it's regulated by the FAA. Uh, so it's not going to go away unless the owners of the property decide not to uh, continue with the FAA clearance. So um, I understand that by them taking it out, there won't be any new or additional helipads, but the one that's there is, is going to stay as long as they uh, have the FAA approval. That's federal and it, it supersedes um, our, our regulations. Okay. Joe, you're quiet. Anything else on your from your perspective? Well, like I said, I think this thing was <laughs> really beat beat down to where where it's workable, and I agree with everything that's been said. Uh, Tim did a good job keeping everybody, I think, focused. All the different departments, and like we said. I'm really impressed with the watershed outcome. I mean, uh, there again, there's a lot more opportunities now, even though they've zoned it, uh, separate zone than was before. So I, I think this, you know, with the exception of making that adjustment with the 15 to 30%, I think it's, it's a good deal. And like every other deal, I mean, I, I just think for this time, for this period, it's a good deal. You know, if we get a proposal four years from now for something else, well, that's something to consider then. But I think at this juncture, uh, for the taxpayers in this town, this is a great deal. I, I think um, I appreciate you giving me some accolades, Joe, but, you know, Kevin and Allison have worked tirelessly on this and they deserve all the credit. You know, just um, you know, the map that was on the cover sheet of the, your, so just to further illustrate how clever this whole thing was, when that map first came out, uh, if, if a site, there are some sites along the borders of the watershed that actually have one property owner and part of the property is in a watershed and part is not. And what they did on the original map is said, well, if there's some watershed property on the site, sometimes it's just a small corner or what have you, they put the entire site in the watershed. And, you know, we had issue with that saying, 
that, that puts an unfair burden on someone who has, um, you know, a good portion of their property, there's several of them on Laser Lane, that could be fully, but you, you're making them abide by the restrictions of the watershed. So why don't we just make them abide by the restrictions of the watershed on the portion of their property that's in the watershed? And um, so that, that took some deliberation and, and they redrew the lines. So that map has been amended. It's, if you're not familiar with the first one, and I know you guys are, but you, you would hardly notice the difference. But when you, when you blow it up, again, you've got some sites out there um, on North Farms Road. You've got a couple of sites on Laser Lane that the watershed kind of creeps in on part of it. So now those, those landowners can develop the majority of their site under the IX rules and have to abide by the WI on a sm much smaller portion of the site. So objective net, right? Um, you know, maximizing development opportunity, responsible development opportunity, while making sure that we still protect the watershed. So little nuances like that were, you know, sometimes took a while to hammer out, but um, they they were uh, willing to make those changes, and this map reflects that. Gentlemen, anything else? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. All right. Well, then I will uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. I'll second it. And don't forget the meetings tonight. <laughs> don't you forget, Joe. All, All right. Favor? All right. All right. Have a good day, everyone.